Welcome to another episode of This Is My Architecture. And today we're coming to you from the business capital of India here in Mumbai. And I'm joined by Hari from Practo. G'day, Hari. Uh, hey, Adrian. Thank you for having me here. Pleasure to have you. Tell us a little bit about what Practo does. Practo is basically into healthcare. We cater to both providers as well as uh, patients, uh, healthcare providers as well as patients. Uh, millions of patients come to Practo on a monthly basis in order to get, get services from us, starting from finding the right doctor and booking an appointment with them. And a lot of uh, doctors use our softwares uh, in uh, order to manage their practices or establishments across uh, 18 different countries. And that's what Practo has been able to achieve over the last eight to 10 years. Well, millions of customers, I imagine your architecture has gone through a few changes over that time. Tell us a little bit about that. Definitely. So uh, it has evolved over a period of time. Um, it's been eight years since we uh, have been with AWS. Uh, initially, it was a monolith, and we were using uh, AWS auto scaling. And uh, with scale, we have moved into more service oriented architecture. And currently, we are using Kubernetes, and we have close to 80 different services running on production. Well, let's step through that. Show us how uh, how your users interact with this this, uh, this sure. architecture. So basically, each request uh, that a user makes comes to uh, auto scaling setup, which uh, lands up in a, a load balancer, and load balancer forwards it into our router Nginx machines, uh, and these Nginx machines are basically forwarding those uh, requests into another ELB, which is uh, the load balancer of the Kubernetes setup where all our services are uh, running. And uh, basically, we have different kinds of uh, uh, services running within AWS, and we use COPS heavily to orchestrate this particular infrastructure. Right, so I see you've got a couple of groups of workers. Is there anything interesting or unique that you do with Kubernetes? Uh, definitely. So one of the biggest issues that we had uh, in the last uh, couple of years when we started moving towards uh, more uh, microservices was that there was a lot of dependency between uh, the development team and the infrastructure team, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's when we started automating a lot of things with regards to how our infrastructure has to run, how it has to be managed, right? That's where uh, with each service coming in uh, with its own code base, we made sure there was a Docker file that was written within that particular code base. And uh, our CI-CD pipeline, whenever there was a push into our code base, used to pick uh, picks up that particular uh, Docker file and creates the image which can be used across uh, uh, different environments, starting from local to staging to production uh, setups. Mm -hmm. And uh, along with uh, that, we automated uh, basically the infrastructure creation uh, where uh, we created a small domain specific language uh, which basically uh, as a developer one can define what is the other infrastructure other than uh, the kubernetes setup uh, that they would need in order to run the services like rds memcache redis so on and so forth right so it sounds like you've you know uh made it really easy for your software developers not to have to wait for, for the infrastructure team. Let me ask you, Hari, how many releases do you do every month? Uh, we do close to two, two and a half thousand releases on a monthly basis wow. across 80 different services that are running in production today. Fantastic. Right, without having any dependency between infrastructure and development teams. That's great. So I see a number of uh, different logging products. What are these for? Uh, definitely. So there are three different kinds of logs that we generate. One is uh, from ELBs, we create uh, logs that go into uh, S3. And then there are request logs that are generated from across uh, different services that we have. Each request is logged into Graylog, and it enables us to uh, not just log, but create uh, alarms, uh, create um, alerts on top of those logs from across different services. And basically, then we have uh, Sentry, which is uh, uh, I exception or error logging system, which again, uh, whenever there is an issue that happens in either our worker setup or in our uh, the services setup, 
those exceptions or errors are basically logged into Sentry and there is a lot of monitoring and alerting that we have set up on Sentry in order to make sure we catch the error uh, or exception as early as possible and make sure we fix it as soon as mm. possible. So requests, errors I see there. Now I see that you're using spot instances. Mm. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing there. Definitely. So uh, basically one of the uh, things uh, that we have uh, that is very common in uh, any infrastructure is separation of concerns between uh, e asynchronous uh, job processing and transactional requests that uh, come into uh, picture in any infrastructure, mm. right? So with regards to uh, the asynchronous jobs, one of the things that happens is basically uh, the services, whenever they need to create an asynchronous job, they put it into SQS. These uh, SQS jobs, uh, these SQS queues are uh, basically uh, workers are listening to those SQS jobs and they pick it up and they process it. It doesn't require a, a constant infrastructure to be running for the workers because mm. they are anyways managed within SQS, right? right? So that's where we started using spot instances where we were able to basically make sure uh, all the uh, Asynchronous jobs are managed through less cost, uh, what do you say, environment which can run on a spot setup, right? And we did a lot of uh, things on top of it, right, in order to make sure our workers can scale uh, well, right? So uh, CloudWatch, of course, gives the metrics that are there in SQS, right? We basically push those. Uh, metrics into Kubernetes, uh, into Prometheus. These, uh, the Prometheus as a monitoring system supports a lot of things uh, out of the box in Kubernetes, mm. right? We basically expose the Prometheus uh, metrics to be uh, monitored or listened to by the pod autoscaler uh, within the Kubernetes setup which basically made sure the workers can scale based on the metrics, based on the number of jobs that are there in SQS and it has worked wonders for us. We have been able to do a lot more uh, with regards to how uh, well we are able to manage our asynchronous job, how fast we can scale them, how quickly we can process all the jobs that are there uh, in the SQS queue. So that's very clever. So you're, you know, you're using Prometheus as a way to actually manage your load. Let me ask you, Hari, what sort of cost benefit have you seen from this? Uh, basically, we with Kubernetes, we have been uh, able to save more than 40% uh, of the costs wow. uh, because uh, rather than having different uh, auto-scaling group for each of the service, we have been able to cram them into one single cluster uh, with larger instances. And that's great. That has worked that's, well that's fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, what next? I mean, you've obviously done a lot of work here, but where are you planning to take your architecture to the next level? Uh, sure. So basically, one of the key things uh, that we are looking at uh, right after this, uh, which is probably in works right now, is with regards to service mesh, uh, which basically enables us to do a lot of things on our existing workflows uh, with regards to how we manage our requests, how it works, how uh, we manage uh, the, how we distribute the load, so on and so forth. And the next thing that we are looking forward to, of course, is with regards to EKS, so that we can offload all the Kubernetes management to AWS and we can do a lot more innovation on top of uh, EKS is what we are looking there for. There are lots of customers that are very excited about EKS that we announced at re-event, obviously. Hari, thank you so much for coming in and showing your architecture with us. And right. thank you for joining us on This Is My Architecture.